So then guys, in 2026, we are going to be getting a load of new MacBooks coming out from the MacBook Air to the MacBook Pro and also a brand new budget MacBook 2. And I want to cover over all the details of every single MacBook we're most likely going to see in 2026. But first of all, let's do a quick recap what happened in 2025 with MacBooks. Well, essentially in 2025, we got only three new models. At the beginning part of 2025, we got two new MacBook Airs. We got the 13 inch and the 15 inch. The main big deal we had with these is that we had an upgrade with the M4 chip added inside of them. This was the biggest change that we got with it. We also did get that new kind of sky blue color added to the range, but essentially that was it. Nothing really changed with the design of the MacBook Air. It's been the same design ever since we had the M2 MacBook Airs, but they are still fantastic buys to get. And in fact, near the end of 2025, which is Black Friday that went earlier in the year, well, we could actually even pick up this MacBook for around about $800 sometimes even a little bit less what's incredible value for the 13 inch model and even the 15 inch model you could get this for less than a thousand dollars so this was absolutely incredible to get so then guys just a quick one Filmora 15 has just landed and if you're someone who wants clean fast edit without getting buried in complicated menus this version is packed with upgrades worth checking out one of the biggest new additions is AI Extend. This is brilliant. If you've ever had a clip that ends too early, Filmora can now intelligently extend it so that the moment flows naturally, just like the skateboard clip here. So the clip ends, but I hit AI Extend and Filmora fills in the missing frames to keep the pacing smooth here. Next up though is dynamic captions. This is great for YouTube. You can auto generate captions from your voice, then switch between clean modern styles, adjust animation, color spacing, and it updates instantly. Honestly, it saves so much time compared to manually keyframing titles. You'll see me regenerate them on screen here but they've also improved the pen tool so you can draw custom motion paths with far more control like I've done around this MacBook screen. And the new dual timeline editing makes lining up A roll and B roll easier between different projects. You can just jump between timelines, drag clips around and keep everything organized without the usual chaos. But then you're also getting proper multi-track audio and video, better built-in effects and smart tools like object remover and smart cutout to quickly clean up your shots. Just like how I've managed to cut myself out right here and yeah, I'm electrocuting myself. Filmora 15 feels faster, cleaner and just more kind of creator friendly here. If you want an editor that's powerful but still easy to learn, definitely give it a try. Check out Filmora 15 using the link below. Now I must say this is sponsored, but as always, the thoughts are mine here. Download it, test the tools I show today, and see how it fits into your workflow. And again, thank you so much, Filmora15, for sponsoring this video, but let's now get back to it. But skip forward to October 2025. That's when we got our last new MacBook, and that was the MacBook Pro with the M5 chip inside of it. No M5 Pro or no M5 Max, just a normal M5. And again, not much really changed with the design. It was literally just the chip that was upgraded inside of it and this paved the way for the next generation of Apple Silicon. Now that M5 chip definitely has some great improvements out there especially for things like LLM kind of capabilities with saying you know things to do with AI and you know, language models but also the GPU was also a screamer introduced into it. It's actually up to 45% faster than the N4 GPU. So this was really impressive to see with the MacBook Pro M5. But like I said, that was it. We only got the three models there of the MacBooks in 2025. But in 2026, things are going to look quite different. So let's go over there what we're most likely going to see. And let's get started then. at the very start of 2026. We've been told we're actually going to be getting the new MacBook Air. And again, this will be a 13 inch and also a 15 inch version of this model. 
But what I will also throw in there is that we've been told that the design is probably not going to change again. It's probably going to stick around for at least another generation or two. So probably the M6 is going to get the same design again. But that's not a bad thing because the current design of the MacBook Air is really awesome to have. But the main thing is that you will be getting that M5 chip inside of it. What would be a great upgrade to get with this model. So with having that M5 chip, obviously we'll get that improved kind of GPU being added in into it. We'll also get other abilities like say LLMs and AI and things like this that will be utilized and be faster again. So this will be great and most likely Apple will retain the exact same price what they have for the current MacBook Air for the 13 and 15 inch. This will stay exactly the same for the next generation too. But then shortly after that, maybe a month or two later, we may also see the next generation of the MacBook Pros. And what I'm saying here by next generation, I mean the M5 Pro and the M5 Max. We've been told that this generation of the MacBook Pro is gonna retain the exact same design what we have with the current MacBook Pro. So the ones that we've had since 2021 for the 14 and also the 16 inch version, obviously we have had that space black introduced over that time as well, but really, nothing's going to happen with the design language. The main big change is all to do with the actual chip. So like I said, the M5 Pro and the M5 Max, they'll probably be binned and unbinned versions of this, but we're essentially probably going to see an extra maybe CPU core or two in both versions and the same with GPU cores, an extra two cores probably added on top of what we have compared to the M4 Pro and also the M4 Max. Overall performance wise though, I'd probably say for CPU for both the M5 Pro and the M5 Max, probably somewhere between about 15 to 20% increase in CPU performance, but in GPU performance, it could be a lot different here. We could actually see improvements potentially even around about 60 to 80% over what we got with the M4 Pro and the M4 Max. And this is really exciting to see here. Most likely at the moment, unless things do change, the pricing is probably gonna stay exactly the same for both of these MacBook Pros. And like I said, probably we're gonna get these in kind of the springtime, not the early part of 2026, that's for the MacBook Air. So sort of pre-targeting kind of March to April time when we're gonna get these new MacBook Pros. So moving on, from this there, what we could potentially also see at the beginning part of 2026 is another new MacBook being added to the MacBook family. And this could be say a MacBook E, or could be a MacBook SE, or a MacBook Mini, or something like this, or just even plain old MacBook. And this one's gonna be a little bit different to the current MacBooks that we have right now. We've been told it's actually gonna have an A chip inside of it instead of an M. And this budget new MacBook is probably gonna have an A18 Pro put inside of it. This is probably most likely going to be equipped with say 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and potentially only 128 gigabytes of storage or potentially even 256. But the point is that this new MacBook is meant to be a budget range model. So when I say that, the pricing is looking likely to be anywhere between 599 to 699 US dollars for this model. We're expecting a design to be one of two designs. One of them is like one you can see on my desk right now. This is the 12.8 in version of the MacBook that came out back in 2015 and also got refreshed in 2017. Or the design could actually be the design we got in 2018 for the MacBook Air. And a lot of people out there, you still own this or even own say the M1 MacBook Air because it shared that exact same design. So we could probably get one of two of those designs there actually made for this budget MacBook. So this is going to be really exciting to see this. Now, after this, there is also one more possibility of another MacBook line we could see, and that is going to be the likes of the M6 Pro and the M6 Max MacBook Pro in a brand new design. But this one, I am going to say I am probably about 30-70 on this. 30% sure it will come out in 2026, and I'm about 70% sure it will come out in 2027, because essentially this is a brand new design MacBook Pro. 
And I would think right now that Apple by the end of 2025 would have probably introduced, say, the M5 Pro, the M5 Max MacBook Pros to us if this new one was going to come out in 2026. And especially like I did tell you earlier, it looks like the M5 Pro and the M5 Max MacBook Pros are going to come out in March time. For them to bring out a new design MacBook Pro to come out, say, in October or November time, it's not unheard of. I'm not going to say that, but it just seems a bit unusual for Apple to delay out those MacBooks into March. They should have brought it out in 2025. You get the idea here. So that's why I'm more on the fence that this could be in 2027. But just in case it does come out in 2026, the idea of this new MacBook Pro, it's going to be a whole new design from the ground up for the next kind of evolution of Apple Silicon. One of the biggest changes that this MacBook Pro is going to have inside of it, it's going to have an OLED display, a tandem OLED, very similar to what we have with the iPad Pro, a Pro Motion version of that. Again, it will still be a 14 and 16 inch versions of these, but we'll also get things like a hole punch camera at the top. We won't have that notch anymore. And probably the design of this MacBook would have things like a vapor chamber inside of it to help with cooling and potentially a little bit thinner than what we have with the current MacBook Pros, but battery life will probably stay exactly the same there. So just be aware of that too. But we've also heard other rumors as well that potentially could even have a touchscreen, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. But personally, like I said, I'm more in favor that will probably come out in the early part of 2027 than in 2026 in my head more than likely. But really guys, those are the new MacBook Pros on target for 2026. Are you excited for them? Are you going to get any of those models? Well, let me know in the comments below. And on that note as well, guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. As always, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.